G'day friends, welcome to day, I think it's 12, 13? Please check title. <laughs> Mermaid, 2024, I just woke up from a nap and I realized I have to do this before I go pick up Steve from work so I can actually do the video and upload it. I took today off, like I didn't even do anything. I've just been literally tired and exhausted and I'm letting my body recover my mind recover. Yesterday, I think I was telling you about the feelings that I had been having. It was either yesterday or the day before. Some re random feelings. I spent some time unpacking that last night, and I'm not going to lie, it just really brought up a lot of emotions. And funnily enough, Steve was kind of feeling, I shouldn't out him like that, but <laughs> he was feeling something a little similar. And so it was interesting because we were kind of bouncing both of our thoughts off each other about that and it was just it was a lot of emotions to process also it was mother's day yesterday and so you know that was just a lot as well i had called my mom the day before because in australia it was you know we're a day behind in the states um but i put a bunch of little clips in my insta story for mother's day just things that made me laugh or like smile when I thought about my mum and I just I was already homesick and that kind of made me a little extra sensitive I was very sensitive yesterday I don't even think I was upset or sad there were some like sad feelings that came up last night when I was kind of unpacking my foolings about uh the topics we were talking about but it just you know it was just like one of those nights where I think we both had to kind of dump it all out <laughs> you know like get it all out there and then go to bed so I woke up today and I thought, I kind of said yesterday I was probably going to give myself all of today off, maybe go to the beach. I was so tired. I ended up just having lunch with a friend and literally doing nothing. I cleaned around the house a little bit, but uh, I figured I'd do my mermaid video. That would be the only work I'll do today. And yeah, I just really enjoyed myself. I've been kind of lazing about on the couch, fell asleep in the sun. So, you know, when the sun kind of take, like drains it out of you as well, I've just, yeah, I'm, I'm awake now and I should probably say hello, <laughs> do the video. I really like the piece that I did for today too. It's uh, one of those weird moments where I just felt like I had to do everything with a ruler. And did I even use, I'm sure I used a ruler. Let me go double check. It's all very geometric looking and it's kind of an interesting tail idea that I've never done before. Yeah, I used a ruler. Uh, I think I drew it in red first and then ruled it all up in graphite. The tail is made out of a bunch of fish that are kind of eating each other. So like it's a row of fish that are like attached or eating each other. I'm not quite sure. Sometimes uh, I used to draw mermaids as the top half was a human and like a centaur kind of has that, uh, which I guess is a mermaid, has that fish tail, but I did an actual fish. And so at the waist or at the hips, it would be a fish's mouth kind of like eating the mermaid's body. And that would be the fish tail. Just an interesting thing that I do sometimes. I just like it. It's a little ooky kooky spooky, but I I don't see it that way. It's nothing like gory. <laughs> it's just an interesting, like, I guess waistband detail for the mermaids. But I really liked how this turned out. I thought it was interesting and geometric. So please enjoy today's submission for Mermaid Day. Let me just count the pages. Why not? One, two, with the tutorial, three. Four was the Starbucks bag. Five, six, seven, love that one. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, love eleven, twelve, love twelve too. Yeah, this is thirteen. Um, the other page, because you won't have seen this, but if you look up in the screen right now, I have some stuff on the other side. I actually took a selfie and did myself as a mermaid, and it's a it's an interesting take. But I wanted to draw my face because I hadn't done it in a while and. I feel like there's a part of me that wants to know how to do caricatures. I watched that person on TikTok that does the caricatures in Hawaii and makes them really hilarious. Like, I don't want to go that far because I feel like there's a bit of truth. I mean, there is obviously some truth to it. I think the observation that you have to do to make it funny still reveals the flaws that you pick or perceived flaws that you pick out in someone's looks. So caricatures in a way still feel kind of nasty to me. <laughs> I think I'd be fine with the humor of it all, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable caricaturing anybody else. But I think there's a lot that I could learn from understanding how people do caricatures in pulling out uh, 
defining features in people's faces and being able to draw likenesses better without actually having to draw someone's legit proportions. And so that's the thing that I'm kind of interested in. How do I capture and distill the essence of the features that I'm seeing without having to draw them properly. So I was kind of practicing on my own face and seeing if I could simplify it a little bit. And I also got into this really weird um, thing with my face. Sometimes when I look at my face from different angles, I think, I don't know who that is. And then <laughs> as I've lost some weight, funnily enough, I've started to recognize my face again. But in the camera, I don't know if this is flipped. Like, is this how you see me? Because this is my right eye. What are you seeing? I'm touching my right eye, so you should see it on the left. I can't figure that out, and honestly, it does my head in to know if this is flipped or not. But if I'm looking, yeah, because if if I'm looking, no, I can't do it. So <laughs> anyway, Steve always asks when we're shooting, do you have a side that you prefer? And I've always thought, no, I mean, either way, it's kind of fine. My teeth kind of cross a little bit. So sometimes I prefer the side, whichever, like the light is more flattering on my teeth. So it doesn't cast a shadow. So sometimes I think, oh, this is my better side because it lights my teeth better if the light hits it that way. The funny thing is though, if you look at my nose, for some reason, my nose looks more like my grand's like side of the family. On this side, it's very rounded over this way. I have a very straight nose and it's kind of like thin on my face, but it seems rounded at the edge this side. And then on this side, it seems pointier. Do you see what I mean? Is that me? I feel like I have two noses. <laughs> it's completely different nose on either side. And I prefer this, uh, like this more pointy nose than the rounder one. So maybe this is my side, but it's not for my teeth. This is my side for my teeth. <laughs> let that be a sign to you to keep wearing Invisalign if you do get Invisalign because I did the whole thing and it straightened out my teeth and then I stopped wearing the retainer I had a weird like I had a weird thing with the Invisalign I wanted it and I, like just realistically the reason I really wanted it was because I felt like I would be more marketable as a dancer with straight teeth because that just seemed to be the standard and the reality was I'd actually done many, many contracts with my natural smile and there was never a problem. And on stage, you really can't tell. And I think even in person, people don't think my teeth are like jacked up, but they're just not perfectly straight. Um, and at that time, my, I think that like these teeth in here were kind of collapsing inwards a little bit. So my bite was getting a little narrower and it didn't cause me any problems, but I think just aesthetically, I wanted to have straight teeth. And then I did the Invisalign for a year and a half, I want to say, and that straightened out all my teeth. It was kind of minor. And then I came here and they gave me the aligner to wear the retainer. And I said, can I just have the bar that they put in so that it doesn't shift? And they were like, no, we don't, we don't do those. Uh, they're a nightmare to clean and we don't trust that people clean them properly. So just have to wear your retainer. And the problem was they gave me the Invisalign one, which kind of broke after two months. And then they said, well, just come back and get another one if you need another one and we'll give you another one. And I was like, I'm not paying $200 every month or however much it was to keep this retainer. Like, can I have a long form one or whatever? Didn't even bother with it because I thought, ah, oh, whatever, I'll get around to it. And then never really got around to it. And the teeth really slowly over time started shifting back to where they were. My smile is wider than it was before, but the teeth here just kind of crossed back to default. It's an interesting thing. It's like your body has a memory for where those teeth were and it's like its default position and that it just is naturally going to travel back there over time. So I uh, don't even know how we got on to talk. Oh, sides of my face that I prefer, this side or that side? I guess, yeah, this side. But the teeth don't bother me anymore. And my mum always had a bit of an issue with it because she said that my teeth had character before, which I don't think is what many people want to hear when you describe someone's teeth. <laughs> but truly, I mean, that was my smile. That was what my smile looked like. And it kind of made me a little sad to think that my mum preferred my old smile. And Steve was like, you can't just make your teeth go back to the way they were because your mum didn't like your new teeth. And I was like, she didn't not like them, but she just, she was like, that, that's you. That's your real smile. Like, that's you. And I don't know, it just made me feel a little, it made me feel like I could accept my teeth a little more knowing that that was my natural smile. And there really wasn't much wrong with that. Like there isn't, it didn't really stop me from working before. It wasn't something that wasn't marketable. I've played many a character with that smile and it was all fine. So I don't know why I got in my head about it. It just, 
I think sometimes when you're in industries where you have to concentrate on your presentation, your marketability, your look, you just start to overanalyze everything and you start to try and homogenize your face to match or your body or your look or your presentation to look like everybody else that is being hired so that you can be hired alongside them. But I think now, especially watching trends like with the Kardashians and stuff and the bodies and the injectables and the implants and everything and all the things like, I mean, I'm, I love an aesthetic choice. You know what I mean? Like I'm not against plastic surgery or anything. <laughs> You've seen my fashion illustrations. You know, I love to uh, stylize the fashion figure form, female form, whatever. I, I don't mind. I think everyone should do whatever they want to do. Not my business. Um, but I do think there's an interesting shift away from the the standards that once were and they're shifting into something different. We always kind of go back to that skinny cycle every now and again. But even in people's faces, so much it's so common and you can get filler and Botox on a lunch break now. And, uh, you know, people do it to varying degrees of success and people want different looks out of it. I'm a bit more like... I think you should either have it done where you it's so subtle, you don't even really notice, or go the whole way, like look like a lion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just do the whole face. <laughs> I just don't think there should be any in between. I think at some point, you know, we'll start to, and I've seen this in, in um, fashion photography and in models that are getting cast. Some, it used to be kind of like a, a thing where you would get these models, like what's her name? Jagger, Georgia Jagger, Mick Jagger's daughter, the one with the gap in the teeth, uh, you know, you would start to take these very unique characteristics of people's look and people would make those marketable. And then people start to accept that, you know, all different types of features can be beautiful. And I think over time, once we've, you know, seen such a saturation of everyone's faces looking very similar, like there's almost no television show you can put on now without seeing lots of lip filler and lots of both. I mean, any reality show, that's just all you're going to see. Um, and it's quite a homogenous look. And I think people's eyes will start to shift towards, you know, we've accepted that that's pretty and that's, you know, Instagram face or whatever you call it. I think we'll start to have an appreciation for more natural features, uh, just because it will look different. You know, we all used to have much more different looking faces. And now a lot of people, you know, they call it, um, what's it like the, not Elizabethan, Victorian face, something. There's like certain actors that you just can't put into a period drama because their face doesn't look like it belongs there. There's something about their look that is too modern. I think all of that stuff is very, like, it just, it shifts over time. And I myself have started looking at people who have very natural features, like, you know, striking noses, or a lot of times, like, people also, I was talking to uh, Stella, we were talking to Stella about nose jobs, and uh, she was saying that, like, there's not just character to having certain noses, but a lot of people's heritage is in, you know, some of the structure of their noses and their face. And sometimes you could actually be taking out something that is even cultural. You know what I mean? That's what she was saying. And I thought it was really interesting. And so all of those things, I think, help, you know, help us to accept the less than perfect features we might have in our faces. And as someone who draws you know, my own face from time to time. I do get quite up close and personal with it. I put on makeup for when I perform and I look at my face all the time in these videos when I'm filming. Obviously, it looks like I don't care too much today. <laughs> but I do look and I've always want, been one to look at my face. And for the most part, I'm very happy uh, with my appearance. I don't have hang-ups about what I look like. You know, I think I just look like a normal man. But I... Uh, yeah, I definitely found much more of an appreciation for my natural smile. Ironically, after trying to straighten it and then it going back <laughs> to normal. But yeah, my nose, this is a new thing for me. I did. I, I see. I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing. They call it um, Kiki and Booba. There's that thing, that test where you can look at something and you can say whether it's Kiki or Booba. And most people will say anything that's kind of soft or rounded you'd label, label it as booba because that's what that word looks like. And the kiki with the Ks and the Is, it all is very angular and linear. And so anything that looks sharp or angular, you know, would be a kiki. And people say like, does he have a kiki face or a booba face? And I would have a kiki face is what I thought. 
um, Steve said that he would think that's true as well, and uh, that Steve would have a booba face. It's a, it's a funny thing, go and look it up if you haven't, but now that I'm seeing it, this is my booba nose, and this is my kiki nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, heads and tails. <laughs> I gotta go. Look, this is what happens when I wake up. Brain is on, but not registering any useful information. Hope you enjoyed that chat about my face. Hope you enjoyed Mermaid Day 13. I will see you again soon. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this day off. Go and pick up my husband. Have a lovely night. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.